Hello everyone, my name is Alex and today's video I'm actually going to be showing you guys a really cool little plugin that I found called the VR Expansion Plugin. It, so I've actually been using this plugin for about a month or two for actually my own personal VR or pro, uh, game that I've actually been working on. Um, and it was so amazing and it has so many great features that I, I honestly feel like Unreal Engine should have anyways. Um, that I just, I, I had to make a video on it because I've had so much fun using this and it's made it so much easier too to develop uh, VR games and things like that. <clears throat> uh, the creator of this plugin, uh, if I recall, uh, is Mordentral. Um, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, so I'm really sorry if I uh, butchered it. But um, yeah, so I, I wanted to go over, uh, show you guys a little bit um, how to set it up. Um, as well as some of the cool little features it has that makes VR development so much easier. Um, before I go and jump into that, uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it helps out a ton. Um, and we'll go and jump right into the video. All right, so first thing we're going to want to do in order to uh, install the plugin uh, is we're actually going to need to, of course, be able to download it. Um, so I'm actually going to show you guys uh, how you guys can find the site. Um, and I'll actually leave a link to um, the site in the description as well um, if you want to check it out for yourself. Um, but it, to look it up, all you have to do is look up VR Expansion Plugin. Uh, it'll be one of the first things that should pop up for you. Um, and it's actually be this first link. Um, you can also see uh, there's he there's a GitHub link, which is actually where you'll need to go to download it. But um, this is the actual full documentation, and everything for the site. Um, it's it's got some pretty good uh, information on how the uh, plugin uh, functions and some more things about what it offers. Um, but in order to download it, because that's the part we're focusing on right now, is you have to go over here to Repositories Code and click on Main Plugin Repository. Um, and you should get to this GitHub um, page right here, um, where it actually goes more into detail about the plugin and all that kind of stuff. Um, so in order to download the plugin, you can either one, Clo uh, clone it if you uh, know how to do that. I'm not going to bother uh, going over cloning or anything. Um, but you're all. But if you don't know how to clone or anything, you can also just download it as a zip. Um, I downloaded it as a zip, um, and I actually have it sitting in my downloads folder, so I don't need to worry about that. Um, but we can actually go ahead and extract it here real quick. Um, it only takes a second, and this is our uh, this is our folder for the plugin. Um, so you do want to make sure that you have this, and I'm actually gonna get rid of the master. You don't have to. Um, I think it's just a little bit unnecessary to have the master part there. Um, but anyways, so um, once you have the plugin downloaded, you then want to go to the root folder of your whatever project you're using. I actually made a different one. Um, I actually tried it with the project that I had been using in my previous tutorials, but I found that one of the um, CPP files that I named actually shares the same name as one of um, as one of the uh, additions that are, come with the VR expansion plugin, so I wasn't able to get to build it quite right. Um, so I ended up just creating a new project for this. Um, anyways, to go ahead and add it in, um, go ahead, right click, and we actually need to create a new folder called plugins. And you just want to open that up, and you just want to drop the VR expansion plugin right in there. And that's it. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, boot up the project. I'm actually gonna go ahead and let it boot up real quick, and then uh, I'll be right back in a sec. All right, so this was actually something I had briefly forgotten about. <laughs> uh, just in case you get to this point and you're kind of concerned or whatever, um, right here uh, you have to press yes. Uh, it'll simply rebuild with the new plugin. Um, you can actually see it list two here because if you actually open up the plugin, there's actually uh, technically two folders. You have the VR expansion, and the Open VR expansion, which um, I may be wrong, but if I recall, is actually used for the gesture recognition, um, which was what originally got my attention on this plug in the first place. Um, but anyways, um, just go and press yes on that. Um, it will need to rebuild the project real quick before it reopens it. Um, but yeah, there you go. All right, so um, plugin went ahead and loaded up. Um, if you want to be sure that it loaded up, you can actually go up here into plugins, and you should actually see you now have open VR expansion plugin and VR expansion plugin. Um, in case you weren't, in case you didn't know how to do that before, that that's how you can uh, find it out. Um, and then it gives you a brief description of the plugin and uh, who made it, what version it's meant for, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but anyways, 
Um, once, now that we're in here, we can go and have a look at actually the VR expansion plugin. And I've actually pulled up as well the um, the old uh, project that I've been using for past um, tutorials as well. Um, the reason being is I want to show you guys that there was a lot of stuff that is actually added in, like just default stuff as well. So if we actually go down here, we can actually see, um, let's see what we got here. We got grippable actors, grippable characters. Um, let's see, there should also be down here VR base character, if I recall, uh, and VR player start. But there's a lot of cool stuff that was added in here. Um, VR, yeah, VR base character and VR character. If we actually go in, into um, this, this is a project without the uh, VR expansion plugin in it. Um, we can actually, just if we type in VR, you can actually see there's not a whole lot actually to use. Um, but if we go into here and we just type in VR, oh, uh, you can actually see there's a, a, quite a bit more. Not a lot, um, but also you have to keep in mind that not everything um, in that's included from the VR expansion plugin is labeled, you know, VR or something. But just the fact that they add in, you know, the VR character, um, like that, it's actually quite nice. And I'm actually going to go over that real quick. Um, I actually want to real quick, let me go ahead and make a new folder. Because I want to show the, um, the VR player is structured very differently. And I actually quite like it too for a lot of reasons. Um, so if we actually go into here, all classes. Uh, VR, do VR base character. I think that is what we are looking for. So if we actually go and open this up, there we go. Uh, you can actually see it's structured quite differently compared to how I did in, in a previous video, and it's actually kind of nice. Um, for a couple of reasons. So if you actually look at it, you can actually see the left motion controller and the right motion controller are both attached to the player themselves rather than being separate actors and then um, kind of attached to the character. Um, and there's a couple things with this. Um, one, it is, it is certainly a little bit cleaner like this because you don't have to worry about having uh, you know, to split up all your functions and everything across your hands and your um, main body separately. Um, but it's all, but it, um, there are um, potentially some other issues you can run into with the other way. Um, if you actually look with the default uh, blueprint, the default VR blueprint, um, you can actually see that um, in, when you create a new project, everything is naturally separated. Um, however, I have run into issues in the past, I will be honest, um, where uh, sometimes the hands wouldn't rotate with the body. Uh, this was actually after a very specific thing that was actually added to that project. I can't even remember what it was looking back on it, um, but it can certainly happen. And it's less likely to happen with something like this where everything is all attached together, all bound together properly, um, which is rather nice. Um, you can also see that you also have a lot of grip stuff added in. Um, so yeah, like a lot of really nice stuff was added in because of the VR expansion plugin. Um, motion controller, um, yeah, like it, it makes it so much cleaner, so much nicer to use. And this is just looking at the left motion controller. You can actually see the right motion controller as well it has its motion source set. Um, and um, it also makes it really nice for networking and stuff. So if we actually go into here, um, it's not just actors. We also have components to look at. And you can actually see there's a lot. Um, so I had actually mentioned um, that I actually got into this because of the VR gesture, um, which I won't lie was a little bit of a pain to set up uh, at first when I was still trying to figure this out. But once you kind of figure it out, uh, the VR gesture is actually really nice to use. Like it does very well accurately um, recognize your gestures and stuff. So I actually have, um, so you can actually attach these to like uh, your hands or if you want to have it attached to some other object, you can actually attach them to objects and um, and go over it. And um, I might actually end up doing that in a, in a completely separate video in the future because um, there's quite frankly too much to go to go over with in just the single video. <laughs> um, but you also have VR buttons and uh, dials, um, levers, 
um, which some of these sound a little bit ridiculous. And if you're trying to make something simple, maybe it, it is a little bit over the top for you, but you can actually make buns that will actually naturally look like they're being pressed down or levers that naturally move with what you want. Um, so there's a lot of really cool stuff that it, that gets added in here. Grippable boxes, uh, skeletal meshes, all this kind of stuff. Um, but something very interesting that I did want to bring up uh, is the optional rep skeletal mesh and static mesh. Now, from my, at the very least, my understanding, um, these are actually used for for making the networking a little bit easier. And from what I found, it actually does work very well. Um, as um, as I've actually been playing around with this with uh, both dedicated servers and uh, client to client servers, um, I've actually found that these do very well at replicating a static mesh or a skeletal mesh. Uh, at least from what I have found so far, I've not had any issues with these. Like you can just attach them and it works just like a regular static mesh. So we can actually do um, left hand mesh. And I'm actually real quick gonna attach these um, and I can show you real quick. Um, let's see, let's do static meshes for this one as well. Right hand mesh. Um, so if we actually go in, I'm actually real quick just gonna set these both to like cubes or something like that. Uh, not collision, uh, static mesh. 1M cube, let's actually decrease that a little bit. Let's do like 0.1. That's, that's a little bit more uh, reasonable, I think. All right, so I'm actually going to drop this into the scene real quick so we can actually uh, have a look at it. Um, you will, if you're trying this uh, as well right off the bat, um, there it's not going to actually run perfectly. Um, I'm just going to set the auto possess and auto receive input. Um, but it's not going to work perfectly um, if you're using it just like this. Uh, the reason being is... Uh, if you actually look at the VR character, you can actually see there's a capsule. Um, the way, and this will actually determine the height of the player. Um, there's actually, um, so if you actually want to set the height of a player to a specific height, um, you actually want to adjust the capsule height. Um, if I recall, when you spawn in, the, the camera will automatically be set to about right up here. If I recall, right up in this uh, upper area of the capsule, which is for most players going to be way too tall based off their actual height. Um, again, I'll probably end up going over a little bit more of setting up with the VR expansion plug and all this uh, in a future video, just because there is an awful lot uh, that is offered through this, and there there is also a lot that you can do with this, um, and as well as a different setup. Um, but yeah. Uh, at the very least, I'll show you guys real quick this, um, and I'm not going to do um, any kind of multiplayer or anything, um, even though I would have really liked to, so I could show you guys the hands replicating. Um, however, uh, it, the player needs to have a little bit more settings done to it. Since there's no movement, both players will spawn in the same spot, and it just won't look right. Um, so yeah. Um, but. Trust me, they do replicate right off the bat, no problem. Um, so we can actually go and jump into here, and you can actually see um, they just move. They like everything just works right out of the box. Like I, there was no setup involved in this at all. All I had to do was just a, attach a couple of. Oh, I think it might have frozen on me. Um, all I had to do was just attach a couple of stack meshes, and that was it. I was done. Um, you know, drop into the world. Of course, um, as I mentioned before, you can actually see I'm actually a little bit tall compared to a lot of this. Um, and this is, I think this is actually at the exact height of the capsule, like I said. Um, so you can actually see, like I could see over this, um, over that, I can nearly see over uh, these blocks right here as well, which I really should not be able to do. Um, given my actual height, I should probably be maybe at most the height of that lower, um, of like those lower pillars right there. Um, like that should probably be, and even that's probably a little bit too tall for me in all honesty. Um, but yeah, like the VR expansion plugin offers a lot of really great stuff. Um, 
<laughs> like I don't really have many other words for that. Um, if you're looking to develop, you know, your own VR game or application or anything like that, I would certainly suggest checking this out, just because it offers so much that, quite frankly, I think should have been an Unreal Engine to begin with when, you know, when VR became a thing, <laughs> um, in Unreal Engine. Like a lot of this just seems like things that just should have been in there and just aren't. Um, and the VR expansion plugin helps out a lot with that. Um, but anyways, um, I, that's it. Um, <laughs> uh, I just thought it would be a really cool little video um, to just kind of look over this. Um, I'll certainly probably look at um, making some more videos on setting up more of this uh, with the VR expansion plugin. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, I mean, if you're looking to get started in VR, this should at the very least be enough to get you started. Um, so yeah, um, that's all I got for today's video. Um, like I said, if you enjoy the video, you want to see more, uh, like, subscribe, uh, helps out a ton, and um, I'll see you in the next one.